for the day is from the book of Genesis, uh, the 12th chapter, 1 through 5, and then 7, and from the 15th chapter, 1 through 7. And it's talking about God calling Abram, who was later named Abraham. Now, God told Abram, say, you know, leave your home, leave your father's house, leave your country, <clears throat> leave everything here, and go to the great nation. Said, I will bless you and make your name famous, and you'll be a blessing to many others. And then he told us, I will bless those who bless you, I will curse those who curse you, so you don't have anything to worry about. Then Abram, <coughs> Abram left just as God told him. He took his nephew Lot with him, and he went, <coughs> and he was 75 years old at that time. That's kind of an old to be have to move, take up, and and, and go somewhere else. He's special traveling. But nevertheless, that's what Abram did. Abram took Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all his wealth. He took his cattle, his slaves, and, and, and uh, all the things he had accumulated, he took that with him and arrived in Canaan. Now the Lord uh, appeared to Abram and said, said, you know, I'm going to give all this land here to your children. And Abram, Abram built an altar there, so I don't remember that, I don't remember that. So he built an altar. And then, after all those things, the word of God came to Abram in a vision and told him, said, now, Abram, don't be afraid, don't worry. I got you, I got you, Just don't be fearful. He said, I will defend you, I will shield you, I'll be your shield, I'll give you great blessing. Your reward will be great. Because see, when, he, when Abram, he got to Canaan, he found out there was people already living there. Then he had to go through some more stuff. So, um, Abram says, uh, the Lord told him, said, don't worry about it. He said, said I, I got you. I'm your shield. I'm your protector. I, I will make you great. And, and, uh, and then Abram said, to, said, the Lord said, you know, what is good is all these blessings? I ain't got nobody to leave it to. I have no heir. Said, and without a son, he said, some other household member, some other member of my household would get all of my wealth. Said, well, what good is it? And he said, and he said that uh, right now, he says, I'm childish. He says, and I got Eliezer, 
of Damascus. And he going to get all of my stuff. He going to get everything. And then the word of the Lord came to Abel saying, no, no one else will be your heir. You shall have a son to inherit everything you own. Don't worry about Eliezer. Or don't worry about Lot. He's your next uh, king that's over there where you are. So, but they're not going to, neither one of them going to be, I told you you're going to have, you're going to have an heir. And Abraham thought, uh, Abraham thought, it sure do look mighty dim. It looked mighty bad because right now, I don't see no signs of nothing. And, and then, <clears throat> then the word of the Lord came to Abraham saying, you know, now, ain't nobody else going to get it. Don't worry about it. I told you your heir get it, and that's what you're going to get. And he said, you will have a son from your own body. Just, uh, uh, it'll be your son coming out of you. So, so you don't have to worry about that. And then God took him and said, now look. So, so come in, come outside. Show them the night sky. I said, now just look. Look up there and say, count those stars if you can. And of course, Abram knew that there was too many to count. And then, and then he told him, said, that's the way your descendants are going to be. That's the way your descendants will be. And God continued talking to him. And God told Abram, said, you know, I'm the same Lord that brought you out of Ur, of the Chaldees. That's where he were when God called him, says in um, And to give you this land to you forever. And, and <clears throat> Abram was thinking, you know, all that God was telling him that he was going to do for him. And, and uh, Abram thinking, you know, what good is all this? I got land, I got money, I got all this stuff, but I want a son. And this, you know, I just, God, and he, you know, he just, he just told God, he talked honestly to God, and just poured out his heart and tell him, said, now Lord, you know, you've been good to me, you kept me and all this stuff. But you don't see what I'm talking about, Lord. I tell you, that way you give them me is fine. But if I had something heir to leave it to. So you see, and, and, and as we look at certain points in it, as you know, when God called Abel away from all that he knew and to go to a place where he had no idea that God, and God would reveal it once he got there. Now, uh, research said that one reason God, God, uh, the reason Abel was told to leave all that was familiar with him was because God was calling him out of adultery into faith in him alone. You see, uh, <clears throat> the people where he came from, the people of, of, of Haran and the people of the Ur, Ur right. of the Chaldees, right. They, they worship sin. Sin is the was the moon god. And they worship the moon god. Because they believe that the moon controls human behavior and outcomes in life. And sometimes, you know, you've you heard people say, well, there must be a full moon tonight. They're acting up. <laughs> so we, we've heard that before. And so these people here really believe that everything controlled by the moon god. Your action and, and, and your behavior and your outcome in life, they felt like it, it was controlled by the moon god and they worshiped the moon god. So by, by surrounding, being surrounded by all those people and God knew if, if Abram stayed there over the years eventually he might, he might break down and he might start to worship him along with them because he was already had been there. And so he said, um, so God uh, told Abel, said just get up and leave and go where I tell you. And see, being, being surrounded by the people, the people practice the worship of creation and not the creator. And so that's why they believe the, the moon, the moon God. And, and, uh, <clears throat> and it could have some bad effect if Abram had stayed there the, for the rest of his life, you know, Abram did so much better by moving, and if he had stayed there, he would have been affected by all of that. So sometimes the call to separate from family and, and from family showed that, God, you know, the call to separate him from his family was what God wanted to do something different in Abram's family life. 
and want to do something differently. And, and sometimes family ties could be a barrier uh, uh, to making the choices. You, you, you know, you're close to your family, you're tied to your family. It could, it could be hard to make that choice. But nevertheless, Abram went on. And you know, God would not ask us to leave if he didn't have something better. God had increased Abram's asset. He showed him Canaan and helped him in battle. But it does not have it, but he did not have an heir. And, and he saw no value indeed because his servant was going to receive his estate. You know, sometimes it's like, you know, no matter what God gave Abram, it just wasn't what he wanted. Like, God, you don't understand. I don't want an heir. I don't want no more land. I don't want no more money, no more cattle, no more servants. I want a son. And, and it's like, Lord, you ain't, you ain't picking it up on me. And so it's kind of like if you wanted, if you was going to buy a certain kind of car, say you had planned on, you said, when I get a certain age or when I get to this stage of the game, I'm going to buy me a, a kitty cat. <laughs> I'm going to buy me a Cadillac. Well, when you got to that point, you found out that it cost more than what you had or you, for some reason, you couldn't qualify for the Cadillac and you ended up having to get you a Ford or something else. And you, and no matter what, you ain't never satisfied. Mm -hmm. You never pleased because you didn't get what you wanted. And uh, nothing wrong with what you got. You got a good deal and you got the payments uh, you know, where you can handle it. Which would, which would be great, good interest rate and all, but it won't what you want it because that's not what you had. So Abram felt the same way here. No matter what God gave you, no matter what, no matter what uh, he, God gave him, until he got that son, he was not gonna be happy. And he thought about all the wealth he had. Said, now you know, all this here, I'm going to leave this. And the closest person can to me out here is Lot. But then I brought my servant, so I got Eliezer, my slave. And I didn't want to give him. It's just not fair. It's just not fair. So, you know, God, God had increased all this, but he still wasn't happy. And then God assured him his heir would come from his own body. He said, now you're going to have a son, and, and he would be the father of nations. Abraham said, now, nah, I mean, Abraham said, you know, I've been waiting. And look at me, and look at Sarai. Look how old we are. And, what, you know, how long he planned on us waiting? And then he said, I, I, I don't know. And he tells Abraham, he said, you don't have to worry. Just trust. All you got to do is just trust. But Abraham says, uh, you know, we want what we want. And in this case, it was not a bad thing, but sometimes we want what we want and it's not good for us. Uh, God will not give it to us then, or God will say, wait a while, I need to teach you something, I need you to grow up, I need you to learn more about the spiritual values of life before you get this, because you may not know how to handle it once you get it. And so, but in, in Abraham's case, he was, he was increasing his faith he moved him from out of the, where he was. He said, because if he stay there, he's going to end up living and worshiping the Isle of God just like they did. So we're going to move him out. But to Abraham, you go some, I tell you where you are. I want y'all to journey. Start your journey. I'll tell you, I'll reveal it to you when you get there. Now, you know, that's hard. That's got to be hard. You want to know where you're going. That's why you use your GPS system. So you want to know where you're going when you step out. But Abraham had no idea. And all of this cattle and slaves and stuff, he moved so much to this new land, only to get there and find out there was already people living in that land. So God assured him, you don't got nothing to worry about. I'm going to help you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to be your shield. I'm going to be your protector. So you ain't got nothing to do but just do what I tell you because I got your back. <coughs> and Abram, <coughs> Abram knew that. Abram was, he believed, but he was just upset, wondering how can God keep giving him material things and he ain't got nobody to need it to. And so, you know, we have, most of us have created a lot of stuff in our lifetime. And the truth be known, 
All the young folks don't even know it. Don't know what it is, don't want it, and don't care. So, Abram thinking that, you know, it just ain't fair for all this that you've given me, and what I've accumulated and everything, it ain't fair to leave it to somebody else, like a, one of the, like the slave, or leave it to Lot, his nephew. It, it just was not fair to him. So what, what we're saying that, you know, um, <clears throat> God knew all about he would, he would test his Abram in some ways and see how he was going to do. When he took him out and told him to count the stars, he said, count the stars if you can. Well, Abram looked up at the sky. He knew he couldn't count all the stars. So he said, um, if that's where your descendants going to be. And finally, Abram realized that, you know, if I'm going to have all that many descendants, then I got to, I'm going to have an heir of my own. And see, you know, broken promises, you know, sometimes they call years of resentment, anger, and anguish. And, and you know, the closer you are to a person, the, the more it hurts when, when the promise is broken. But you know, sometimes, and we have been guilty of breaking promises to somebody. It's not that many times we didn't mean to, we didn't want to, but we being humans, we're limited when we promise to someone something. We don't know if we can can uh, pull it off, so to speak. We don't know. We mean well. We really plan to do it. But sometimes things happen way beyond that we can't fulfill that promise. And the person, all they know is they've been disappointed and they've been hurt. And, and so, you know, but with God, it's, God don't make any promise that he can't fulfill. But he may not fulfill them when we want, how we want it and with whom we think we ought to have it. But nevertheless, when he make a promise, he can, he can keep his promise. And like I said, we try to, we do the best we can to keep our promises, we, but sometimes it's just way beyond our human self. And, and uh, <clears throat> just like Abel, you know, God may call us to, uh, uh, God may call us to trust in him, who knows where he's going to take some of us next? Uh, <clears throat> some of us, we may, he may take us to tell us to get up and move. Move on to a place that I will tell you, or he may already have a place lined up for you. But nevertheless, you have to be sitting on auto because you don't know when the God's going to call you to do something. And, and <clears throat> sometimes we have to move from our place of comfort and go out and do something for somebody else. Go to uncertainty. You may have to struggle, but what we have to walk in faith and not by sight. We have to trust God to count on us for righteousness. Amen. But you know, <clears throat> uh, sometimes you you have to be you have your discernment. You have to discern things because a lot of things uh, require your attention now. There's, there's, there's social media, there's family, there's everything is pulling at you sometime at one time. And you say, you say, you know, okay, okay, I need a break. So you have to be able to discern when God is calling you. Because when he's calling you, he's calling you for a reason. He may be asking you to do something, or he may be asking you not to do something. He may be a, a keeping you from harm, but you got to know that. And so, you know, when you when you talk to the Lord, <coughs> so when you talk to the when you're talking to the Lord, Lord is talking to you, you've got to know this is God talking to me now. And, and everything else is is out of the picture. But the way God talked to Abel and some of the old ones in the Bible, he may not tell us to do the same thing. But he talks to us every day. Every day he's talking to us, whether we listen or whether we believe it or whether we got time to sort it out, try to sort it out. But the thing about it, you have to stay focused on God because you don't know when, he, when he's going to tell you to do something. He's with you all the time, but you just don't know. And just like he told Abram, suppose Abram had said, I ain't going away, I'm going to stay here. Well, he may not have had, he wouldn't have had all the land and the stuff that he had, but he wouldn't have had an heir either. But God, uh, he sent him all around. He kept giving.
giving him instructions to do what needs to be done. And as he followed those, he gave him some more instructions. And he's really doing that to us too. As we follow, he's giving us some more instructions. So um, finally, then he gets down to it when he knows for sure Abram believed it. Then he's ready to give him an heir. And you know in that situation, only God can do a thing like that. I mean, talking about a miracle, <coughs> that's just like the birth, the birth of Christ. It's a miracle. But Abram was, and as we read on and on, it says Abram was, uh, I think he was supposed to be about 90 when he was born, when, uh, when his son was born. But, but to, tell, um, <coughs> and to tell him, and then he had to wait 20 or 25 years, and he tells him, said, well, you know, you have to have faith. You have to have something strong to hold on to. How else can you make it? As, as the things are, you know, without God, how are we going to make it? And then, you know, we have to remember to trust God when it appears that all hope is gone. Sometimes it can get mighty rough. Sometimes it seems like things just ain't, ain't working right. But we still have to trust God. Amen. Sometimes it seems like it's hopeless. It's like a, your situation, like nobody can fix it, but God can. That's right. And he will. And just like with Abram, Abram figured, you know, what in the world is going on now? I, I just don't know. I just, but God says, but God told him that you do like I tell you, and you won't regret it. And see, God's time is not based on the years and the season like our temporary calories. Uh-uh, they're not based like that. But it is measured by his plan for eternity. And his faithfulness is not connected to a specific time, but it comes in the fullness of time. And um, when God determined the time is right, remember, faith in God includes faith in his time. Amen. Are there any promise?
I gave you one, so thank you. Uh, Cincinnati. At this time, while we're waiting for the, for the youth to come in, we're going to ask someone from the adult class to respond on the lesson for today. Still waiting on you. Can you hear it now, Mother Bond? Yeah, I hear it now. Uh -huh. Well, when Nancy was teaching, you could always hear what she was saying. Amen. That's why I put the microphone up. That's why I put the other microphone up there. Yeah, Pastor, that's the reason why you put the other mic up uh, to the board. They're not using the microphone. They're not using the mic, Mother um, Bond. Okay. Don't want to say anything right now. <laughs> we, we know that you need to sing a song. You need to keep something going. Someone gets a song while we're waiting on the youth to come in.
time we're here from the youth. Good morning. Good morning. This morning we talked about our little one was stolen blessing, how Jacob stole Esau's blessing, and what the consequences of that stolen blessing were. Amen. Amen. And we had eight kids, and it took us nine dollars in our collection. At this time, we are we are have our reading from City and Secretary for the day. Chapel and St. Stephen Sunday Church School was on September the 4th, 2022. Sunday school was called to order at 1015 by Deacon May. Opening song was Love Lifted Me. Prayer was by Reverend Faison. Lesson topic was Unbroken Promise. Background passage, Genesis 12, 1 through 7, and 15, 1 through 7. Key verse. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land, and they'll build him an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. Genesis 12 and 7. The lesson was reviewed for 25 minutes by Trustee Wooten. Remarks were given by a representative from the class. Attendance is 22 in person and eight online for a total of 30. Offering is $37.75, and the weather is sunny and hot. City Secretary Lois Lewis. Amen. Amen. Any other, is there any corrections? All right, thank you. Again, we'd like to thank Mother Lewis for, um, for stepping in for us today. At this time, we're going to ask everyone to stand. We're going to close. Probe out with a word of amen. Amen. amen.
and this is the victory that overcomes the world and even our faith. Who is he that overcomes the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. As our scripture reads, the one that has the great when he comes and leads in prayer. Good morning again. Good morning. Good morning. I do thank my Lord Jesus Christ that he blessed me to be here once again around this throne. Amen. So let us uh, go with the word of prayer this morning. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come this morning just to say thank you this thank morning. You, Lord. And oh, Heavenly Father, as we say thank you this morning, we want to thank you, Lord, for you blessed us to wake to, you woke up this morning on due time. It wasn't a cop that woke up this morning, it was you, God. Yes, sir. Father God, as you woke up this morning, you blessed us to have uh, strength in our body to move around, and you blessed us as our home was still united as one. Mm -hmm. And Father God, you blessed us to have food on our yes, table God. this morning. Lord, there have been so many this morning who might not have food on their table as you move over their head. But Lord, Lord, you have blessed your Christian here at Anderson this morning to have that this morning. So we thank you this morning for all your blessings this morning. Amen. 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 I now declare a devotion service can open the end when you may have a song, prayer, or whatever the Spirit leads you to do to give God praise. As I said earlier, I would trust in the Lord and to our God, but surely God had been good to me not, not just one day, but all days. All my life he had been good to me, and I would trust in it. Sunday school let the same just more uh, unbroken promise. God had never broken a promise that he made to mankind. We make a lot of promises in life, but sometimes we fail. Sometimes for one reason or another, we may break that promise. But I can promise you this much. When you pray to God, and, God, and, and I, I, I believe a blessing will come down. So at this time, I'm saying our devotion service is over. If God has did anything for you all, I just praise God for what he's done for me, what he's done for my family, wherever they are, whatever they may be doing, I still give him the praise. Because it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, your side, our side, where we have been. So anybody have a word of praise? I feel like you're to my Lord and say, Jesus Christ, and I thank you for everything that you have done for me, uh, and everything, uh, everything that you shall do for me. I pray for what you've done for my family, and I pray much for each of you, and I pray that you pray for me as you continue on this Christian journey. Amen. 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 Truly, I'll be honored to my Lord and say, Jesus Christ. Pastor Lou, you know, tonight, but I have a friend of mine saying hi. To each and every one, true to God, it is good. And I, and I just thank, thank the Lord for allowing me to be here. I thank you for waking me up this morning because I realized that he didn't have to, but he did. And, and for that, I just want to tell him thank, thank you. Because as I realized, it could have been the other way. Man. But I just thank God for saving me. I thank you for, for saving my family. And I pray for those that are not saved, that they will give their life to Christ. Man. I ask you to continue praying for me, and I will pray for you the best I know. Amen. 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 If it doesn't pray.
have failed him, he would never fail us. Amen. In our Sunday school lesson taught us this morning, we may break our promises, but God never will break his promise. Amen. 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 Please continue to pray for me, and I will do the same for you. Amen. Members and friends. Good morning. Good morning. 
Our church announcements are as follows. Upcoming events. The church uses the online cash app Givelify. You may go to the Givelify site and select Anderson Chapel to give tithes, offerings, and or donations. Pastor Lewis has requested to meet with the deacons Saturday, September 17th at 4 o'clock and the entire church family at 5 o'clock. You may begin paying your church anniversary assessments of $119 as early as today. Church anniversary coordinator, Evangelist Dr. Margaret S. Knight. If you were turning 65 years old before or the end of the year, please notify Evangelist Dr. Knight so that you may be added to the senior citizens recognition list. We encourage, encourage every member of the Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church to support and attend all or as many church functions as possible. We are all one body in Christ, and we need all members of the body working together to keep the body strong and productive. Pastor's vision statement. I believe that all people matter to God, and that Christ's message and ministry through the local church is the hope of the world. Reverend Malcolm of Strength, founded on faith, joined in love, kept by God, together forever. Arthur Love. Are there any announcements, uh, additional announcements? <laughs> Good morning, church family. Uh, it is a joy to be here. The sun is shining brightly on the outside. Just a nice, lovely day. And it's a lovely day on the inside here. Why? Because Christ is in the midst. Jesus is in the house. We heard that on Thursday night. When Christ is in the house, when he's in the house, there's wonderful things. So I thank you today. Just to remind you of a couple of things that's been mentioned in the announcements. On September the 17th at 4 p.m., we want to meet with all the deacons there. And then at 5 o'clock, we want to meet with the entire church body. Uh, amen. Uh, we pray that you are able to be here. I know there may be some of you that may not be able to be here, but please do your best to be here on the 17th at 5 p.m. Uh, if you're not able to be here, please uh, contact me and let me know that you would not be here so that we would know uh, uh, how to proceed forward. But we thank God for for you. Um, please join in with us Tuesday afternoon for our community information and prayer group call at 5 p.m. Again, we will be spotlighting a, a local law enforcement officer and we thank God for the sheriffs in the area that are helping us to do this so that we can become better acquainted with the members of our law enforcement officers it's sad that the only time that we hear their names or we become familiar with them is whenever we hear of a shooting, which when one of the law enforcement officers loses their lives. And uh, I believe as we co connect together better, we are able to work together better as a community. So continue to pray with us and pray for us. Continue to pray for my wife and I as we travel up and down the dangerous highways. And we continue to do likewise for, for you. And uh, I want to thank everybody that continue to work so diligently to make Anderson Chapel the best that it can be. Mm -hmm. From those mm -hmm. that uh, keep the grounds to those that uh, clean the interior of the building, to those that sing, to those that pray. We all are in this together. Mm -hmm. And we thank mm -hmm. God for each of you. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Good morning, everybody. Morning. Good morning. Protocol has been set. So I'm um, still giving honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to each of you. I welcome you this morning to Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. And we pray that when you came, your hearts and minds were open to receive the word and to receive what God has for us. We want to thank you for coming out and sharing with us on today. And a special uh, thank you to our guests on today. We want to welcome you to feel free to do whatever the Lord will have you to do on the day. You can sing, shout, run around in the church, do whatever the will of God will have you to do on today. 
And we pray, like I said, that you will receive the word and it will carry you through your week on next week. So with that being said, I want to welcome you once, twice, three times. You are welcome. Amen. Amen. Davis is either on her way, uh, but she's normally here. So we're going to uh, call on trustee Mary Fraser, a dear friend from Salem Chapel, and ask her if she would come and respond to that request.
you look long, you know all things, and you are in total control. Yeah. So into your hands, God, we yeah. commit this service in the name of thy precious blood, Jesus the Christ. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. to God, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, honoring our dear pastor, Reverend Matthew Lewis, all other ministers of the roster. Thank God for being in his house one more time. Amen. Coming to you to bring you the word of the Lord. Coming from Genesis 28th chapter, starting at the 14th verse. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and the east, to the north and the south, and in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. <clears throat> then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. 
Then Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of that city had been Luz previously. Then Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me and keep me in this way that I am going and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I come back to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. I have read to you from the 14th through the 21st verse of chapter 28 of Genesis. It is the word of God. We welcome you back to the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Good morning again to those that were here when I spoke a little while earlier this morning. So we just ask the one that I stand, continue to stand as we give our Lord Jesus Christ the glory of for him. Let us bow in prayer this morning. Dear gracious Father, as we come this morning, we come again and saying thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, as we say thank you this morning, we want to thank you, Lord, because you blessed us one more time to be around right this church. Amen. So, Heavenly Father, we ask you to come around this throne and just have your way this morning. Yes, yes, sir. Sir. And then, Father God, we just want to thank you this morning because you blessed us to be here with our health and strength, mm -hmm. our mind is in contact with our soul. Mm -hmm. And then, Lord, we say thank you once again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And then, Heavenly Father, we just ask you, Lord, just to be with us wherever we, whatever we do in the house of the Lord this yes, morning. Lord. Yes. Just control and let us follow your, your will some, Lord. Thank and then, Heavenly Father, we just ask you, Lord, with all your will and your grace, be here with us as the pastor continue to go through his word this morning. Let us learn from some of his words that he might deliver yes, to us this morning. Yes. And then, Lord, with your love and your grace be still, give you all the grace and honor on this day. Yes. We want to thank the Lord for all of your blessings this morning. Thank you. Amen. 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 Yeah. 
just keep on praying. Yes. Because the yes. Lord is not. Just yes. keep on praying. He'll yes. hear your cry. Yes. But as this is our homecoming service on today, and as we are not coming out of, but still in the midst of the COVID pandemic, yes. and, and yes. with that coupled with monkeypox, we are so glad to see that we have some members who have come back. Some who grew up in this church, Amen. some who visited us on a regular occasion before the pandemic. And I just want you to stand that we may see you and, and, and honor you all this morning for joining with us on homecoming today. Please stand, all our visitors and, and returning members. Please stand and be recognized.
Og kom op og også den tår.
we understand how the COVID is. Amen. So you want to come to the office, you more than well. That we may talk to the Lord for you. Amen. And you know, I found out, isn't that how loud we yell, how many words that we use? Uh, how good that we make it sound. But talking to the Lord. Amen. And, and you know me by now, and you just can't always say, I know he got to do it this way. <laughs> but I do wait the Spirit lead me to do things. And I want to share this scripture with you before we start this morning. Coming from 1 Timothy. Yes, Jesus. We had a good revival this week. Yes. The Lord in this house. Yes. 
and the Lord knows. Uh -huh. The Lord knows what we need even before we ask. Yes, he knows that what we don't even know before we think we know. He already knows. Yes. Yes. So the Lord says, you know, you know what each and every one is standing in need of. You know that those that are on the line this morning, you know what they're standing in need of. Amen. You know that a uh, spirit sleep this morning, Father. I touch right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And Father God, we will help Yes. Give you the praise. Yes. We forever give you the glory. Amen. All praise and glory to you. Yes. Father God, not only is teach us yes. what to pray for. Yes. When to pray. Yes. And not about to die. She always pray. Yes. Yes. Teach us what to pray for. Yes. Yes. And Father God, when we don't know, we don't see for But in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, 
and ask the neighbor this question. Do you really love your neighbor? Do you really love your neighbor? <laughs> now tell the neighbor, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to you. That question really wasn't for your neighbor. That question is for yourself. Because we have no control over what our neighbors do. But we have control over whether we love one another. We have to answer that question for ourselves. Do we love our neighbor? Brother and sister, it's good to see you today. I know that the Lord has brought you through some trials and tribulations. But God is good, isn't it? Yeah. God is good all the time. All the time. Even in the midst of heart problems. Yeah. High blood. Yeah. Low blood. Yeah. Diabetes. Yeah. COVID. Yeah. God is good. Yeah. And I got a right to praise Him this morning. Yeah. Because I am a living testimony yeah. of all that the Lord has done. Yeah. And somebody ought to say, God has been good. God has been good. Amen. 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 Well, it's good to see you back in the house one more time. Amen. This homecoming. Amen. Homecoming is a good time to talk about loving thy neighbor. Amen. Because we left this community and we went in various places. And some of us, we got married. Some did not. But one of the things that no matter whether you're married or whether you are not married, there's always a question that you always hear. I hear from my wife a lot. Really? I don't know, husbands, if you hear it from your wife. But I know that every now and then they'll ask the question, do you love me? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And sometimes they ask the question, do you really love me? Amen. Amen. Yeah, right. yeah. You know, sometimes they ask the question, do I love, do you love me? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I love you. Now, do you really love me? Amen. And then sometimes when you get to that point, say, what do you want? <laughs> Amen. Amen. But this morning, do you love your neighbor? Amen. Love thy neighbor. Right. This is one of the basic principles of God's word. Mm -hmm. For even here, Paul is speaking to the church of Galatia, Galatia, and he says, for the law is fulfilled in one word. Even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. This one should really work here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And, and, and if, if we love our neighbor, there's a way that we behave towards our neighbor. Amen. You know, when my wife asks me if I if I love her, she expects to see some sign. Amen. If you love your neighbor, you ought to show some sign. See, God showed the greatest sign. For God so loved the world. They gave us only the guidance of Amen. That whosoever shall believe in him should not perish, but have life everlasting. And it's just good to know that that love was so great that he sent his son. Now, there's a danger in not loving your neighbor. Because if we don't love one another, we have the tendency to bite and devour one another. And we are looking at a world that is devouring one another. Nations against nations. Forget nations against nations. Political parties against one another. 
communities in an uproar. Oh, yeah. And it all traces back to our homes. It traces back to each other. Matthew chapter 7 verse 12 Jesus gives a directive and we have called it the golden rule. Therefore, whatsoever you want men to do to you do also to them. For this is the law and the prophet. See, whatever you want me to do to you, do also to them. The negative way of stating this commandment was long known before Jesus. See, because it was said, it had long been said, you should not do to your neighbor what you would not want him to do to you. But it is a significant advance for Jesus to put it in the positive to say that we should do unto others what we want them to do unto us. Do you love your neighbor? In doing so, Jesus makes the broader command it is a difference between breaking traffic laws and doing something positive like helping a stranded motorist. Under the negative form of the rule, the ghosts of Matthew 25, 31, and 46 are found not guilty. You need to go back and read that under the negative law because it says, do not because they did not. But under the positive form of the golden rule, Jesus' form, they are indeed guilty because they did not do what they would like to have done for themselves. You know the reality of it is if you're hungry, you want somebody to feed you. Jesus said, when I was hungry, to those on the right, he told you fed. But those on his left to say, you fade me not. So if you love the neighbor, you'll feed him. I know you can't feed everybody. I know you cannot in some instance maybe even give a full meal to somebody. But somewhere along the way, you ought to be able to help somebody. See, this especially applies to Christian fellowship. If we would experience love and have people reach out to us, we must love and reach out to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't expect the people to love you if you don't love them. Yeah. If you want love, you got to give love. Yeah. It's a reciprocal type of thing. Yeah. See, the reality of it is we love God, but he first loved us. And he showed us just how much we love him. None but he whose heart is filled with the love of God and all mankind can keep this person, either in the spirit or left. It seems as if God had written it upon the hearts of all men. For saying of this kind must be found among all nations. Jewish Christians and heathens, so says Clark. But we need to have love. We've got to love, for love is the foundation, it's the basis of Christianity. For this is the law and the promise. Jesus shows that this rule, this simple principle that we call the golden rule, summarizes all the law and the prophets. What they have to say, how we should treat one another. If we would treat, simply treat others, 
the way we want to be treated. We would naturally obey all the laws. Oh, what all the laws say about our relationship with others. Spurgeon says it this way. Oh, that all men acted on it. And they, if they did, there would be no slavery. There would be no war. There would be no swearing. There would be no striking. There would be no lying. There would be no robbing. But all would be justice and love. What a kingdom is this with such a law. If we love one another. If we did unto others as we would like for them to do unto us. See, we talk about the neighborhood. Dr. Clinton said it like this. We will be better off when we move from the neighborhood and we move into brotherhood. See, because it's all about brotherhood. It's all about love. No matter who you are. No matter what walk of life you come from. It doesn't matter whether you're the preacher, the teacher, the deacon, the mother, the choir, the member, the usher. You've got to have love. This makes the law easier to understand. But it doesn't make it any easier to obey. To obey. No one has ever consistently done unto others as they would like to do unto themselves. And we would be honest about it. You know, we strive about it. We try to do our best. But you know, we have to we have to try. Don't let the enemy Tear your life up. My mother used to sing this song, Don't Let the Devil Ride. Because if you let him ride, he'll sure the drive. Don't let the devil ride. You can't give space to the devil today. You've got to learn how to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Do unto others as you will have them to do unto you. For, for no one has not done it all. But there is one man that showed us the example. For Luke 23 and 34, we find that Jesus, they're hanging on the cross. Jesus kept the precept. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. The love of Jesus never fails. On the cross, he prayed even for his executioners. Asking God the Father not to hold them, this sin against them. Jesus probably prayed this prayer many a times. But this is just the time that he could not get it to a secret place. He was there hanging on the cross. So he prayed it openly. And this prayer was heard and noted because he had no quiet place to pray. I said he probably prayed this prayer a number of times because Jesus ran into many Sadducees and Pharisees that questioned his authority. He ran into many that called him and tried to test him. But Jesus did unto others as he allowed them to do it unto him. He prayed for them. Those people in your life that will talk about you. Those that will scandalize your name. Those that will try to hang you out to dry. It's a tough thing to pray for them. But if you love them, if you're a child of God, pray for them. I've had situations in my life. I've had people. I've had people that got under my skin that you say they rub you the wrong way. And sometimes the mindset says, I wish they wasn't in my way. And sometimes we want the Lord to take them out of the way. But what we all to do is say, Lord, have mercy on them. And give me the strength. Give me the strength. Because the word said that you would place no more upon you than that which you are able to bear. Church of the living God. See, in this Jesus fulfilled his own command to love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use, misuse you, and persecute you. For they're on the cross. Jesus saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. 
Jesus recognized the blindness of his enemies. In his prayer, forgive them. They did not know what they did. This does not excuse the guilt of those who put Jesus on the cross. But Jesus sent his enemies in the best possible light in his prayer to his Father. We must pray with the same heart and the same pattern. Do you love your neighbor? You got to pray for them. We, we, we can't go around being pitiful, spiteful, and devouring one another. We got to pray. We got to pray for them just like we want them to pray for us. I know sometimes there are people who will pray for your destruction. But you ought to pray for their blessings. See, because when you pray for their blessings, there's a blessing in it for you. Amen. Church of a living God. Amen. If ignorance do not excuse a crime, at least it diminishes the atrocity of it. However, those persons well known that they were crucifying an instant of man, but they did not know that by this act of theirs, they was bringing down uh, uh, damnation upon themselves and their country in the heaviest of God's judgment. In the prayer, Father, forgive them. The word of prophecy was fulfilled. He made intercessions for the transgressions. Church of a living God. Do you really love your neighbors? But Matthew 5, 44 says, But I say unto you, Oh, church of a living God. Oh, love your enemies. Instead, Jesus reminds that in the same sense, God means it. All people are our neighbors, even our enemies. To truly fulfill the law, we must love, bless, do good, and pray for our enemies. And in praying for our enemies, if you pray right, if you pray long enough, if you pray hard enough, they might even become your friends. That's one of the reasons why some people don't like loving their enemies. Because they don't want their enemies to become friends. Because some of us, we really get along better when we have enemies. But I'm so glad that God sent His only begotten Son, Church of a Living God, the disciples' attitude. To religious persecution must go beyond non-retaliation to a positive love. Just because you don't deal with your enemy does not keep you, bar you from praying for them. Church of the living God, we've got to be positive in our attitude towards one another. A hard task, I say, I must need say, but hard or not. It must be done, be it never so contrary to our foul nature and former practice. We have got to love one another. We have got to love those who hate us. We have got to love those who will misuse us. We have got to love those who will talk about us. We have got to love those who will, who will put our business out there in the street. We have got to love those who will talk about us. We have got to love those who walk away from us and they'll, they'll put a knife in our back. I know it's hard, but we got to love them. Why do we got to love them? Because the Word of God says to love your enemy. Pray for those who will spitefully use you. It's not easy, but this is what Jesus did. They're on the cross. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. The son gave his life. And they're on the cross. The son said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Do you love them? I said that earlier. Do you love them? It's a question that wives ask husbands. A lot of times, husband asks wife this question. Boyfriend asks girlfriend. Girlfriend asks boyfriend. Church members ask church members. 
But this is a valid question. Because even in John chapter 21, Jesus looks at Peter. Peter, son of Jonas, did you love me? Church of a living God. It is a valid question today. Do you love me? Do you really love your neighbor? Will you do kind for your neighbor? Church of a living God. Jesus told Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. Church of a living God, if you love your neighbor, feed your neighbor. Feeding your neighbor encompasses more than just giving them a morsel of bread. If you really love your neighbor, give them a morsel of God's word. If you love your neighbor, give them some kindness in your life. If you love your neighbor, when they're sick and need some help, take time to help them out right now. I see my daughter sitting there, Maria, and it reminds me, not too long ago, they called me and their mother, their mother, their mother needed to go to the eye doctor. And Marcus, Mary, and Maria, they all was busy. They could not take their mother to the doctor. But one thing they knew, that daddy was there for them. Church of a living God. But not only was daddy there for them, but Lois was there for them. We went with we went with their mother to the doctor. Why did we go to with their mother to the doctor? It's because we love our neighbor. We love one another. We have got to put aside our differences and understand that the love of God is more powerful than anything in this world. And it's not about how I feel about the way you treat me, but it's how I feel about the way I treat you. For we are sinners, saved by the grace of God. Do you love the name? I can't go around saying I love my neighbor in every instance talk about them. Putting them down. If I love my neighbor, if I want to talk about them, talk to them. They may not like what I say, but talk to them. You may not like what I tell you, but I'm talking to you, not to someone else. See, because that's what love does. Yeah. Love says we may not agree, yeah. but we have communication yeah. together. Yeah. For Jesus died. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. He died for my sins yes. and your sins. Thank you, Lord. And as he hung on that cross, yeah. even as he said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they did. Yeah. He would say, Father, forgive them. Yeah. Even those that put that whip to his back. Jesus. Those that made his back roar. Yes, blood seeping from his yes. back. The cat of nine tails with all sorts of yes. bones and shrapnel yes. wrapped up in that whip. Yes. Forgive him. Yes. He was beaten with a whip. Yes. And all we did is talk about. Yes, we don't want to forgive them. Yes, we want to hold it to ourselves. Yes, 30, 40, 50 years. Yes, Amen. Amen. Some of them are in the grave now. Amen. Yes, and we're taking it out on the children. Or if Jesus asked the Father to forgive them, yes, we ought to be able to ask the Father to forgive them. Yes, yes. For Jesus taught us in his prayer, forgive us our debts yes, yes. as we forgive our debts. Yes, we got to love one another. Yes, yes. So the question for you again today is, do you really love your That question is for me. Yes, yes. I've got to answer that question for myself. Yes, yes, yes. A tree is known by the fruit that it bears. Yes, yes, yes. You can answer that question for yourself. Yes, but there are some things that you do that make other people question yes, yes. 
But I don't know. I have neither heaven nor hell. But all I know is, I've got to shoot you the way I want to shoot you. You can talk about me. You can call me names. But I thank God and I pray that he gives me the strength to be able just to hold my hand. Oh yes, there's some times, there's some things I have to tell you. Amen. But the things I tell you, yes, Lord, help me to tell you yes. the Christian love. Amen. Now you're not going to make a doormat. <coughs> but I can tell you in Christian love. Yes, sir. Jesus whipped, spat upon, yes, sir. criticized, yes, sir. mocked, never saved. He did all of this because he came to set us free. He came to be that lamb that gave his blood to shed his blood because almost without all things, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. But he died. We come on this day with this table prepared to recognize how he suffered and died on the cross for my sins and your sins. Do you love him? If you love him, love your neighbor. If you love your neighbor, treat him with power. Talk to him. And this back and forth, it doesn't accomplish anything. Amen. But just devouring yes, a nation. Yes, Amen. I pray that this word has been a blessing to someone. Amen. Amen. It is the word that God has yes. allowed me to preach to It's good food for my soul. Yes. Amen. And we pray that it's been a blessing to you. Amen. The choir is going to give us a session of their choice. This is a wonderful opportunity this morning for you to look at your own heart, your own life, and ask yourself the question, do I really love my neighbor? Am I really willing to pray for my neighbor? Am I really willing to put our differences aside? And if you can say, I'm not willing to do that just yet, then just come to the altar. Amen. Just come to the altar and ask the Lord to give you the strength Amen. to renew you. Because there's no harm asking for help. Amen. If you ask him, he will. Yes, we have not because we yes. have. But also, this morning, if there's one who do not know Jesus in the pardon of your sin, we have seen the invitation that you may come and accept Jesus as Lord of your life. For without him, you cannot love your enemies. Without him, you cannot love those who spite the news. But Jesus is calling. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling you right now. Will you rise? Will you stand? Will you stand in invitation? This may be your last opportunity. Amen. It may be the last sermon I ever preach. Amen. I don't know. But one thing I do know is that I'm striving to make heaven my home. Amen. Come on, Lift your amen. Amen. We're going to do this song, all y'all can join in. All right now. Put your hand up here. Everybody put your hand up here. Down through the years, I know the Lord did good to me. Oh, down through the years, I know.
As we come at this time for the Lord's Supper, we come recognizing uh, the death and burial of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, how he suffered and died. As we always already stated, that there on the cross he was marked and he was spat upon, the crown of thorns put upon his head. Jesus instituted this commemoration with his disciples as in Matthew 26 Dr. Knight is going to read beginning with verse 26 from Matthew 26 and as they were eating Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said take eat this is my body and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink with all of it for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. 
This is as Jesus instituted it with his disciples. But the church took hold of it and they began to divert it a little bit. It became perverted. And Paul had to correct the church. In his letter to Corinthians, Church of Colossians, Paul writes, as Minister Howard shall read. For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, every one take it before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. What have ye not houses to eat and to drink in, or despise ye the church of God, and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord, which also I, which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he betrayed, took bread, and he had given thanks. He broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup, which he has sucked, saying, This cup is the New Testament. In my blood, do this do ye, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you ye show the Lord's death till he come. Amen. Amen. As often as you do this, we do show forth the Lord's death and suffering till he should come. God sent his son. The son gave his life. Mm -hmm. And it's not for us to take this life. Mm -hmm. This is a solemn occasion. Yes. Yes. And the scriptures bear fact that this is the body and blood of the Lord, our Lord and Savior yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. The scripture bear fact that Jesus blessed this bread and he blessed this yes, wine yes. and he gave to his disciples. We are not able to bless this bread and to bless this wine as he gave with his disciples, but we are able to ask the Lord to intercede on our behalf. Okay. Now as Corinthians, which she did not read through that extent, but it said, it's dangerous to partake of this unworthy, mm -hmm. but it's also dangerous not to partake of. Amen. Search your heart. Amen. Now, I had you earlier to ask your neighbor, do you really love mm -hmm. your neighbor? I told you that question is really for me. Amen. Don't search your neighbor. Search yourself. Amen. And if you know you're not right, mm -hmm. don't question whether your neighbor is right. 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 But if you're not right, you can get right. Amen. As Deacon May shall lead us in prayer, ask the Lord to move anything that would hinder you. Amen. And then move forward with your life. Amen. Because God sent his son to save us from our sins. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The body and blood. Everyone desires to be saved. Have you been saved? Does anyone need another? Scripture says, carry one for another. God knows that we will have trials and tribulations. But Jesus suffered and died on the cross. He gave his life for my sins and your sins. They whipped him. They spat upon him. They marked him. Yes. Placed the crown of thorns on his head. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, as often as we do this, we do show forth his death and his suffering till he should come again. We are being patient. <laughs> God is patient yes, yes. and waiting for us. Amen. Yes. So glad. So glad. So glad. Amen. Amen. He gave us another day yes, he did. just to get it right. Yes, Thank you, God. Thank but time you. is winding up. Yes, it is. And it's time to get your house in order. Amen. 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 This is why he sent his son that we should not be lost. Amen. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us eat the altar. Amen. The blood, let us drink together. Jesus said, I will no more drink of the food of the vine than I drink it anew in my Father's kingdom. I know some of you may wonder sometime why there is a pause in between partaking of the bread and partaking of the wine. Now, I know some of us, we like, when we make, put something in our mouth, we like to drink immediately thereafter. But I pause so that you can focus on the Bible. Yeah. We can think about what Jesus has done. And then you partake of the, of the wine. Because we should take our time and think about how Jesus suffered in death. After they had died, they went out, they sang a hymn, and they went out into the Mount of Olives. We today, we do not have the Mount of Olives, but we do have our various own homes, communities, houses, and bodies. And let us go and love our neighbor. Amen. As we shall stand together. I am redeemed. Reach out and touch. 